start talking about binomial nomenclature and classification a little bit. So what I have here on this slide is the um, classification of five different organisms. Human, chimp, house cat, lion, and a house fly. And so those are um, all animals. And you see there, we already talked about humans a few times, uh, their classification and where they belong. Um, but you can see how the others compare to that, the chimp and the house cat and the lion and the house fly. Um, now you have a mistake on yours. Under house cat, okay, it says domesticus. That's actually not the, the species for house cat. Um, it's actually catus, C-A-T-U-S, yeah. So you could change it under uh, the cat. The last, last one. So yesterday we talked about binomial nomenclature and how to give things a correct scientific name. And we know, we said several times that humans, scientific name is Homo sapiens. Um, and what is something important about how we write it? How do you write a scientific name? There's two important things. Oh, I know. Okay? It has to be italicized. Yeah, it's italicized. Oh, my computer's frozen. Oh, no. So, yeah, it's italicized. And what's the other important thing, Sarah? The first like, part of it is capitalized. Yeah, that the, the first part is capitalized. The second part of the name is not. It's also made up of what? So where do we get the scientific name? So like out there, I tell you, Pinus strobus is the white pine tree. Betula papyrifera is the birch tree. Um, so where do those names come from, Juliana? It's the, it's the genus is the first word, the species is the second word. So humans, homo sapiens, genus is homo, the species is sapiens. Put them together and we have the scientific name for humans. So what I would like you to do, Let's look at these others. So what's a chimp's scientific name? Okay. Pan troglodytes. Pan troglodytes. And again, make sure when you write it that you capitalize the P. Leave the T as lowercase. And for your case, you could underline it. When I typed up there, it's in italics. But you can underline it. Jetson? Um, did you look up Gorilla Gorilla yet? Gorilla Gorilla, yeah. It is, uh, that is a species named for the Western Gorilla. Yeah, because I saw it. I was a witness. There are other types of gorillas, but that's Gorilla Gorilla's a thing. All right, house cat. What's its scientific name then? Abby? Felis. Yeah, Felis Catus. Make sure you write it correctly. I thought it was Catus. Catus. How about the lion? Olivia? Felis Leo? And the housefly? Joe? Musca domestica. Yeah, musca domestica. Does that mean it's domestic? It doesn't, but the word, the uh, Latin domestic, domestica or domesticus means House means like having you house like a yeah it means home. All right. So as we look at these the classifications for these various organisms, all of these things belong to what two taxa? Which two groups? Prima? Yeah, they're all in the same domain, which is eukarya, and they're all in the same kingdom, which is. Animal. Animalia is really the Latin word. So because of this, they have some characteristics in common. Even though they may seem very different, a house fly and a human, a chimp and a cat. Um, look at this table. What characteristics do they have in common? So all of five of these species, which of those would you circle? Which one? Addy? Yeah, they are all multicellular. Well, 
What else, Brandon? They're all heterotrophs. And what else? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Austin? They're all eukaryotes. They're all eukaryotes. Oh. So they're all multicellular. They're all they're all um, heterotrophs. They're all eukaryotes. And that's true of all animals. All animals share those three characteristics. So when we look at this, we can tell by looking at the classification which species are most closely related. Um, Christian, what did you say? Mm -hmm. Yes, Christian. How's cat? Right. Um, and why do you say that? Because they go down to genus. Yeah, because they share everything in common all the way down to genus. They only become different once you get to the smallest level, once you get to the species level. So they are very closely related species. But humans and chimps are very closely related. But not as closely related because they only are in common up to order. They're both primates, but as we go down, they're, they're, they're different from there on out. So house cat and lion are the most closely related. All right, any questions about that? Yeah, Joe? What'd you say? It sounds like something from Harry Potter. Five points from Gryffindor, Venus Countess. Yes, all right. Okay, our um, last topic in this section is about um, taxonomic or also called dichotomous keys. Um, and a key, a taxonomic key is um, a tool that can be used to identify an unknown organism. For example, if you go fishing in a night lake and you catch a fish, but you have no idea, so you have this fish in your hand, you have no idea what it is. Oh, yeah. Well, how do you figure out what it is? You take one of the gills off and then you can test it. Oh, well, maybe. You can, actually. Yeah. It's true. But, you can use what's called a dichotomous key. Why do you use a dichotomous key? A dichotomous key is basically um, a set of steps that you could read and follow that, that help you to identify something. This is a book I, I had to use in college. And this is all about, this whole book is just about the fish in New York State. So if I open up to the front of this huge book, there will be a key. That's his joke. Um, here it is. So in this key, it's a freshwater, okay, fishes of New York. And this is the key to It starts at A. What I would do is I would have this fish I just caught in my hand, and I would read what it says here. There's two A's, and I read which one applies to the fish in my hand. So it says A, one pair of gill slits, jaw present although mouth is sometimes sucker-like. So if I look at this fish, I look at its gills, I say, okay, does it have one gill slit? Does it have a jaw? Yeah, it does. If it does, it tells me I should go to B next. And I, I go down to B. B says, is the tail rounded, square, or forked? Okay? Um, or if I read the other B, it has some other choices. Let's say, so yeah, it has a rounded tail. So this tells me I should go to D. Well, I go and I follow through and I go through step after step, and eventually it'll tell me, okay, this fish that I have, it's uh, in the bass family. And then I can go to another step and I can figure out exactly which bass it is. So I don't really need to know a lot about fish in order to identify this fish in front of me, as long as I know what some of these words mean. I can look at the fish, I maybe have to measure some things, count things, sometimes look at the color, things like that. If I follow through this key, it will eventually tell me exactly what species that is. Uh, All right, girls. Um, yeah, Mary Laura? Okay, so you're gonna like take, while you're fishing, you're gonna take out a book, and you're just gonna be like, okay, and then you're Now, if you're actually up. fishing in the Nida Lake, there's probably, you know, 10 or 12 fish that you probably catch more frequently. And after a while, you don't need to do that. You know what a 
you know, one of the things when I was in this course, one of the things we had to do was learn how to identify the fish just from looking at them. So we would have to go up in this lab room at the building and they would have a huge sink, like about half of that counter, this big sink, and they filled it with a preservative, like formaldehyde, and in there were all these preserved fish. And you just go up there when you wanted to study, you reach into this thing, you take out whatever fish, and then you go bring it to your desk, you look at it, you try and figure out, okay, well it has this and this, and eventually you learn what all the fish look like. Why well, did do the same thing for trees? So I had to take a course when I had to look at a tree and be able to identify the species. And again, you just have to learn it. So you use this sometimes if you don't know, but sometimes you eventually learn what they are. Um, this one is another one I had to use. This is really, so this one is for plants in North America, wow. Northeastern United States. This whole book is all just about plants and it has a very long key. It's a really tiny type, okay? So if I have, I can go in the courtyard there, pick any plant out of the ground, start in this key, okay? And I look, okay, are the leaves lacking or reduced to small scales? If yes, um, then I go um, to page 307. And I follow, 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 until eventually it tells me what it is. That's really like... So, you know, this, so that's what this whole book is just about plants, super small print. Because there's lots of small species, okay? But even on the internet, I mean, what would you do? Google, Google plant? plant? Yeah. And that's going to tell you what plant is in your hand? No, you deserve it. You Google it. And then you're going to look at there are thousands and thousands of species of plants in the Northeast United States. You can't just go on Google Images and try to find one that looks like yours. So this is a way to do that. All right, so let's, we're not going to use keys this complex or this complex. We start off simple, and just so we know how to use them and how to maybe create them. So let's look at this one. Do you have a question? Yes. Yes. What if you had that book, and you, your fish was like at the back of the book, and you had to start from the beginning? No. Then you, you'll get there eventually. Huh. Just gonna die the time. All right. So let's look at these finches. So here's a made-up key for um, some different types of finches. And let's just look at how it works. Let's look. You, so you have your unknown fish here. Let's look at this one in the top left. You basically read each statement. You say, okay, which one applies, A or B? And you do what it says until it tells you what it is. So let's look at A. So we're looking at this finch. Is the beak very thin? No. And the upper beak is much larger than the lower beak? No. Or is the beak relatively heavy? Yeah. And the top and bottom are about equal in size? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I follow along. Okay. Now I have to go a step further to find out what this is. Two. Is the so we go down to two. Is the lower beak smaller than the top beak? No. Or is it as large or larger? As large or larger. Yeah, it's as large or larger. Now I have to go to three. Does the lower edge of the upper beak have a distinct bend? Yes. Or does the lower edge of the upper bill is it mostly flat? The first one. Yeah, if you follow towards the back, look at that bend. It has a distinct bend. So it is a Camarhynchus finch. So we, we didn't know anything about finches, but by using this dichotomous key, we can identify. Write that down, please. So Camarhynchus. These are the Galapagos finches. All right, let's look at this next one here. So is the beak very thin, the upper beak much larger than the bottom? Well, this is, oh, that one, that one's really thin. No, but is the upper beak much larger than the bottom? No, yeah. not really, much larger. They're about equal in size. But it's not relatively heavy. No, it's not as heavy as this one, but I would say heavier than this one. Yeah. All right, is the lower beak smaller than the top beak? No. Or is it? Large or larger than the top. I think it'd be just small. Yeah, I think A too. This lower beak's a little bit smaller than the top. So this is a geospiza finch. Geospiza. Look at this one. Again, very thin. No. No, relatively heavy? Yeah. Go to two. <coughs> Is the lower beak smaller than the top, or is large, or larger? It's larger. 
Go to three. Is the lower edge of the bell mostly flat or have a distinct bend? Mostly flat. flat. This is a platted spice. So what was the last We're gonna get that. The, 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 so now you can't. Here's what I want you to be careful of, because I know you guys are just about to do this. Is to say, well, there's only one left. It must be that one. Correct. But that's not always correct. You could have two of the same pinches, really? and you would follow through the key. You know, like if I caught that fish, and then I go fishing some more, and I catch another fish, does that mean I'm not going to get the one I just identified? No, it could be the same species. Uh -huh. So you got to be You still got to work your way through the key. But is this one the beak very thin? Yeah. Upper yeah. beak is much larger than lower beak. Yeah. Yeah. That's a certidia. So this is a tool that can help us basically identify unknown organisms. We'll get a little more complex than this and start to work with some unfamiliar things, but um, you get the point. So let's do this one. So I have five sea creatures. So I want you to follow through this key, figure out um, which step applies to it, and then um, identify each of them. Um, yeah, next each one I want you to write which choice is true. So for this one, do you choose one A or one B? Then then go from there. And I'm going to ask you in a couple minutes to tell me what steps you follow for each one. Hey, Jackson, where's your notes? Uh, um, all of our stuff is taken home. Well, get a copy because you should actually look at it. Oh, we're going to do, do them all. Yeah. And well, don't, I don't want you just to did you just write the name of each of them? Or did you write the steps you follow? Well, I think I No, because I want you to tell me which choices you took each time. Because, I mean, we all probably know what each of these things is. But I want you to actually follow the key. That's still there. So let's look at this uh, top right one. Tell me what your choices were when you did this. Okay. Austin, what did you say <coughs> for this one? I did 1A. 1A, tentacles present. Then what? And then I went to 2A. 2A has eight tentacles? Yeah, it's an octopus. <clears throat> All right, how about this one? Can you Uh I did one. 
one bee doesn't have tentacles, tentacles are absent, then what? Four B? Yeah. yeah, pink body? Yep, that's a shrimp. Uh, how about this one in the lower right hand corner? Joe? Uh, first I looked at the thing and I want to go to two. Well, first, what, what did you choose in one? Which one? The one A and one B. Oh, well, I did it. I, I looked at the next. Okay. Two? Yeah, we start at one. Always start at one. Oh my goodness. So what do we choose for one? Karina, what did you choose here for one? Yeah. No, this one, oh. I'm sorry. What did you choose here when you went to the first section? I went for tentacles present. Tentacles present, so one A, then what? And then put two B. Two B, there's more than eight tentacles. You went to three. three a. Yeah, the tentacles are hanging down. Mm -hmm. This is a jelly. Okay, how about this one, Jackson? Um, I went to 1B. 1B, tentacles absent. And then I went to 4A. 4A, pair of giant claws. Yeah, that's a crack. It's Last one, Andrew? Oh, I did 1A. 1A, tentacles present. 2B. 2B, more than eight tentacles. 3B. 3B, the tentacles are upright. That is a CNN. Um, how do you join um, they, they filter things out of the water. They can actually they sting prey and then put it into their... Uh, Jellyfish don't have brains? No, they have a neural network, though. Okay. So let's get some practice here. That is. Although I can't use that name technically because it's copyrighted. So we are saying that these organisms are from the genus Norno. Norno. 